Hello everyone, so today um, I'm going to talk about 5G architecture. It's a short video on 5G architecture talking about non-standalone and standalone approaches. So uh, it's important to know because uh, when we talk about 5G access and other, other things, uh, it's very important to understand how the architecture works. So let's have a look and we'll see what we have. So there are two, if you categorize the architecture in two broad categories, we have non-standalone and standalone. So let's have a look at non-standalone first because this is the one that is being used nearly everywhere right now. So non-standalone by name, as the name suggests, it means that 5G cannot exist on its own. It needs LTE. Uh, to exist and to work and has the name non-standalone or NSA. This is also called option 3x. Now let's see how it works. Now this is let's say a 5G handset but it in a non-standalone or a NSA a network it cannot connect to 5G directly. It needs to connect to LTE first. So the black line this one is the user plane the dotted line is the control plane so it will have both user plane and control plane on the LT with the LTE air interface and then the LTE air interface LTE in e node B will have the connection to the LTE core using both the control and the user plane now this is how it will look like initially now once the e node B finds out that the UE the handset is 5G capable then it will try to make sure that this user can also get 5G 5G traffic or 5G lag. Now let's see how it works. So first thing it does is that it needs to divert this user plane towards the 5G. So this is how it looks like. It is finished from here and then it is moved towards 5G. Now what will happen is that all any data that's coming from the core, from the LT core will go to 5G. From 5G G node over the air it can go to the handset or it can go over X2 towards the LTE e node B and then go to the handset. So data path will be like this, either like this or following this, this route. So uh, there is no data path now from the LTE towards the e node B, LTE core towards the e node B, but an indirect data path. So this is how the 5G works um, in the NSA mode. The control plane will still stay on the uh, LTE side. So if the user has to send any RRC messages, uh, any RRC reconfigurations, any RRC measurement reports, that will still use the LTE e node B but for any traffic it will use for the 5G G node B and can also use the LTE node as well but most of the traffic will come towards the, through the 5G. This is called the non-standalone approach, the NSA approach and this is what is being used normally in all of the networks right now because it is easier to deploy. For this one you just need to put a 5G um, radio network, a 5G MMB, MMU or RRU or um, a massive MIMO unit or a radio head over here with LTE and you can start it. You don't need the whole 5G core element for this. So it is a simple uh, upgrade from uh, an existing LTE network towards 5G. Now let's say the other option. The other option is standalone which is also called option 2. In this case 5G can work on its own that and then 5G needs its own core. So uh, if you look at this portion a, a LTE UE is connected to LTE. A 5G UE can directly connect to 5G and it can have a session with the 5G core and so you can see both control and user plane traffic is going through 5G. Over here we could only see user plane going through 5G and control plane going through LTE. So in this case we have 5G as a separate uh, RAT radio access technology. So a user goes out to 5G coverage it will move to LTE. Uh, if a 5G cover 5G node or 5G frequency has higher priority. So a user on LTE if it is within 5G coverage it will move towards 5G. So this is how the mobility between RATs can also work. If you do not have voice on 5G then a user who needs to make a voice call will do an EPS fallback and go to LTE to make a VoLTE call for instance. So this kind of thing um, 
is the structure that we do. Uh, we, we still have uh, some standalone networks in, in the whole world, but they are not many. Most of the networks right now are non-standalone. Again, because this one needs a lot more of an investment, we need to add the 5G core as well. And uh, also, we need to have 5G standalone um, capable handsets, which are not that many as well. So uh, right now, many of the networks are actually going towards this approach and then I think as with matter of with, uh, some time when there are more handsets and more handset penetration we will actually move towards all of all of the connectors will move towards the 5G core the 5G standalone approach so that is how uh, the basic architecture looks like the two main categories that we have for the 5G network architecture one is non-standalone which is this one which is being used most of the cases most of the cases other one is standalone which is this one and this is also being used but not as much as the non standalone approach i hope uh, i hope this is interesting for all of you and uh, i hope uh, i am able to help all of you thank you so much